our topic will be personal safety measure so as we know the saying that a prevention is better than the cure so that's why following the safety precaution must be taken while working with the electrical installations or while handling with the electrical appliances so that's why a prevention is better than the cure so that's why now we are discussing with the personal safety measures so first before knowing that let us know what do you mean by electric shock so whenever we are using with the electrical equipments sometimes we will feel shock so many cases uh, uh, almost everyone would have felt the shock right so whenever a person comes in contact with the live wire of the electrical supply he gets an electric shock it may be a mild or severe it depends whatever the amount of current flows through that so if the mild shock will produce a nervousness and severe shock will produce the unconsciousness or the death so a sudden agitation of a nervous system of a body due to the passage of electric current within the body is called as a electric shock then what are the different factors which will be affecting the electric shock so the different factors which will be affecting the shock is nothing but the magnitude of the current flowing through the body so whatever the amount of current which will flow through our body next the path of the current through the body and the time for which the current through passes through the body for how many duration the current will pass through our body then the frequency of the current and the physical and the psychological conditions of the particular person so these are all the uh, major factors which will be affecting the shock ab uh, before discussing the safety precaution so let us know what we have to do when a person gets electric shock the main thing do not panic we should not a uh, panic during that particular time that's why while discussing the previous topic we told that a physical and the psychological conditions of the person who gets a shock so we should not a uh, panic next point do not touch the victim with the bare hands if any person a uh, felt shock so other person should not come and touch him directly or with any a uh, metallic part or with any contact with the electricity next point we should do is we should switch off the supply immediately then once the victim is free check his breathing and pulse we must check the person's a uh, breathing whether is breathing and the pulse rate of him the heart beat so all those things we should do if the breathing stops or uh, dangerously we should do a artificial a uh, breathing for him and we should not give anything to the victim to drink when he is unconscious so these are all the things we should do when a person gets a shock then what are the safety precautions which can be taken to avoid the electric shock so one thing is a uh, make sure that all the metallic parts of the electrical equipments are effectively earth so all the equipments what we are using electrical equipment it should be earthed that is the main thing to avoid the shock second point a broken switches plugs etc should be replaced immediately if you have any broken switches or the plugs or any wires right it should be replaced immediately and before replacing a broken switch a plug or a blown fuse we should switch off the main supply by keeping the supply on we should not do all these things we should switch off the supply then only we can replace all these things and never use the equipments and the appliances with the damaged or the frayed laid wires so if the skin of the wire is taken out right all those things wires should not be used and never insert the bare wires in the holes of a socket for taking a connection always use a pro proper plug so we should use a proper plugs 
for any equipments and you should not use the a uh, bare wires which should be inserted directly to the socket and always we should use the well insulated tools and current rating of the fusing wire so we already discussed in the previous classes the fuse wire should have a current rating so that it will avoid the shock and never try to connect a machine or the equipment to a voltage supply other than the rated one so whenever we have some equipments it will have rated current and the rated voltage right we should not connect that particular machine or the equipment other than the rated voltage if uh, the component what you are using is a 230 volt is the rated voltage you should not give more than that you should not give a three phase supply of 450 volts for a 230 volt machine while working on an electric pole or a tub use safety belt and the rubber padded ladder so while working on the poles or the towers any repair works is doing right we should use a safety belt and the rubber padded ladder we should not use any metal ladder because a metal is a good conductor if you are standing on that if i if you are doing any repair work obviously the we can experience the shock that's why it should be used with the padded ladder and they should use the protective gloves strictly follow all the precautions and the instruction given in the name plate of the machine when you were working and be careful that your body does not touch the wall or any metallic frame when you have in contact with the earth while you are working with the electrical equipments these are all the safety precautions we must take to avoid the shock then what do you mean by earthing so in the first point itself we told that what all the electrical equipments or the machines we are using it should be earth the connection of electrical machinery to the general mass of the earth with a conducting material of a very low resistance is called earthing so it's nothing but it is the process of a transferring a immediate discharge of whatever the electrical energy is directly to the earth with the help of a low resistance so the earth resistance is approximately equal to zero or it will have a very low resistance then what are the objectives of earthing so before that what is the necessity of earthing so to protect the operating personnel from the danger of shock in case they come in contact with the charge frame due to the defective insulation so whenever the person comes and touches any particular electrical equipments right it have as a defective insulation obviously you can feel the shock right if i have done the earthing which will have the low resistance as we know the concept that the current will flow through the least resistance part so that's why if you do the earthing which will have a low resistance it will be approximately equal to zero obviously whenever short circuit occurs or any fault occurs when you come and touch that particular part if earthing is not done the current will pass through the person we will be touching that the human body resistance which will be very less which will be approximately around 500 to 1000 ohms that's why the current will flow through us and we will feel the shock if the earthing has been done the earth resistance will be around 5 to 10 ohms obviously the maximum current will flow through the earthing point and only the few amount of current will flow through us so we will not experience a shock or if you experience a shock also it will be a very mild one so it will not damage the person and to maintain the line voltage constant under the unbalanced condition whenever you have unbalanced condition if i have done the earthing properly the excess of current or the leakage current will flows through the earthing so that we can ma maintain the line voltage properly and for the production of the equipments and the production of large buildings and all the machines fed from the overhead lines against the lighting so whenever the lighting occurs the heavy amount of current flows through if earthing is done that uh, leakage current or the heavy amount of current will flow through the earthing so it will avoid the equipments to get a uh, damaged now what are the different types of earthing we have the main types of earthing what we have is a plate earthing and the pipe earthing the earth resistance of a copper wire is 1 ohm and the ga piper is less than the 3 ohm the earth resistance should be kept as low as possible so that neutral of any electrical system which should be earth is maintained almost at the earth potential 
so whatever the earth resistance at the power house is it will be around 0.5 ohm and at the substation it should be 1 ohm because at the power house we will be generating the power at a very large rating and the current flowing at that will be very high so that's why we should maintain the earth resistance at only 0.5 ohms and near the substation also at 0.1 ohm